It's a high chaos ball. A wobbler. Oh, oh Reynolds. Favoured by the bounce. Oh, he's going to turn it round the body. And he's got another Hi, everybody. Before the bounce, thanks for joining us. Got a big show coming up, as always. The superstar, Greg Anderson, joins me. Ando, how are you? I'm very well. We're leading into uh, the you know, second round now, but it's exciting. I've, I've just missed football. Before really. we get to this, uh, a little bit later in the show, but I want to ask you straight up. Lance Armstrong on the back of the last dance with Michael Jordan. Lance Armstrong's yep. come out for a tell-all interview. Yeah. Did you care? Did you did you have any no. interest? No, not at all. No, no. But, uh, most people I talk to about it, I reckon I feel a bit the same way. We're pretty forgiving on someone that cheats. Yeah. We're, we're, we're anti-drugs. Yeah. But we can't forgive a guy that cheated, but then accused everyone else of yeah, cheating to keep himself. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, it was. It Is was, that where he fell down? No question. Yeah. He accused everyone else yeah. to protect except himself. himself yeah. To protect himself. Fair enough. Yeah, you might try to protect protect yourself, but don't bring everyone else down and say, "Oh no, I'm in it. I'm okay." And I think that's where we're not forgiving him. So. Do you see, we're going to see more already in footy in the next decade. Do you think? Do you sense there's a chance? <laughs> well, I mean, oh, I hope not. I mean, look what happened to the Essen Footy Club, and, 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 they, they hadn't, and nothing's been proven yet. So, you know, uh, I, I, I think the AFL has done a wonderful job in, 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 that, in those areas, and, and oh, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, what's happened to Essen has certainly, you know, certainly it's woken up. If there is an inkling of anything, that had to wake up every single player and every, and every club in the AFL. There's no question it resonates. Yeah. Greg Phillips, of course, uh, was Wasn't that fantastic? Was that a great story? It was, was brilliant. And, and look, I mean, for me growing up, I'm 14, 15, I'm, I'm at Albert and Oval watching the, you know, the young Greg Phillips, just a star. He was a star at Collingwood. He was just, just a magnificent state player. We know about all his number of premierships that he's, that he's won with the, with the Magpies, but for me personally, in those those uh, mid to late seventies and early eighties, you know, when you're that vulnerable age of you know the, you know ten to, to fifteen, yeah. he was my star. You know, he was he was fantastic. So just really really proud of him. Is he, is he the silent assassin? You know, he's very quiet. He's a quiet bloke. Once he gets a few beers in him, he's a different cat. Can't but stop out him. on the ground, just went about his business, didn't he? He just went about just his dominated. business. Just dominated. Yeah. Centre half so, back, one of the key positions. And the, the great thing about uh, Greg was he brought so many players into the into the game. And as you said, wasn't all a voice. No. But you knew that you know, he was there for you, and he was he was ready to to get you into the game. And that was if you ran past him, you've got the agony. No, he's handled to you. He's such an unselfish All right, stay with us. We have got a monster show coming up. I can't wait to get my hands on this one. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. I've got a couple of guests come in. And Finally. What, what have you got? What have we got? might do your guest first. Oh, hang on. You didn't bring anyone. Oh, that's okay. Oh, we'll, we'll see you after the break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who you bring after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at that. A oh. oh, Reynolds, favoured by the bounce. Oh, he's going to turn it round the body, and he's got enough yes, on it. Back and before the bounce, actually the Greg Anderson show, and I'm just uh, sitting here on the sidelines at the moment. Well, you've got my guess. These are my guess. Oh, well, let's talk about your guess. <laughs> mate, who'd you bring in? Who'd you bring in? Oh, mate, have I done well here tonight? Have I done well? Well, well Stephen and, and Billy stress yeah. get much better. You can't so get much better. I've got on the top of the table. Because, I, I, you know, like, we'll introduce her to, to Stephen first. Stephen hey, Greg, yeah. Thanks for coming good, on, good and bit. Billy uh, as well. Thanks, you know. Thanks for having us. Life member, AFL. Uh, you know, a couple of hundred, hundred blazing games. Uh, but before then, about 80 games for West Times as well. Uh, best and fairest yep. for, I think, both clubs uh, as well, Melbourne and... and uh, a couple of, a couple of runner-ups for, for West Times. West Times, unfortunately, yeah. But, um, yeah, um, a half a dozen you know, state games. Uh, you played you know, night grand final premierships. You played in grand finals. Wow, when you're making me sound pretty good. No, you are. <laughs> no, have you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's just the introduction. Well, the only reason I ask is because Billy's is about the same. Oh, oh, the go go no, 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 no. I'm happy with this. Stay with Steve. So. Wow. And where's all that time gone? Yeah, it's, I know, it goes pretty quickly, doesn't it? Goes, it goes very quickly now. Yeah. You know, watching Billy go through it all, it's, um, it's amazing. Those 20 or 30 years have just gone. But, uh, hey, Steve, just quickly, West Torrens, of course, Woodville West Torrens now, yeah. is a great club. What did you make of the amalgamation when it was happening? Is it? Yeah, I, well, I left just before it, so um, I can see why they did it, and they, you know, they had the success pretty quickly afterwards. You know, they won a premiership a yeah. few years later, so I think it was inevitable. But if you talk to the older players now, you know, the Lee Robsons and Bruce Lindings and the Shimmer Bushes and these players, they still, you know, take that to heart, you know, pretty much. They like to keep their old, the old yeah. club heritage there together. So, but I think it had to happen in the end. As long as they don't say they're uncomfortable when they go back into the club rooms, because no, no, they just say recently that. Well. <laughs> and Billy, uh, oh. back in Adelaide, yeah. uh, father's yeah. son, uh, and uh, 50 games for, for Melbourne. 
uh, loved your time there, and, and of course, been able to, to you know, follow your dad's footsteps to, uh, to to play the, the great you know, Melbourne Football Club. That would have been a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, thanks. You know, yeah, it was great. It was uh, like Dad said, it went absolutely very, very quickly, um, quick five years, but. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I had a great time in Melbourne. I had um, Ruzi when I first went over there, and then Simon Goodwin for the last couple of years. And um, you know, Ruzi that good? Like we talk about Paul Ruzi going to Melbourne, yeah. and he, he just gave him something special on the ground, of course, but also off the ground. You know? Yeah, he was great. Really, really great mentor, and um, I learned a lot from Ruzi, and still keep in touch with him today. So. Um, yeah, really, got some really fond memories of my time in Melbourne, and um, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't change anything. I've, I've had a good crack at it, and um, I think I've still got some good footy ahead of me as well. So. I just, it's a very interesting stat. First game for Little Mill, first game for Melbourne, uh, first kicks in both clubs, both goals. It's yeah. an amazing stat. Yeah, it is. It's. Um, it's a bit of a funny one. I must have got a bit lucky, but yeah, so I remember my <laughs> both games very fondly. Um, my first SNFL game down at the bay. Um, I think Taylor Walker was that's right, right against the Crows. Nine yeah. and a half thousand people there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So there was, um, you know, a big stage and um, you know, a great venue down at the bay. So some some good memories there. And then yeah, first kick for Melbourne as well. Um, yeah, that was a pretty special night. Um, one I won't forget um, too soon. That's for sure. Hey Billy, experience is a wonderful thing. Going from Glenelg to Melbourne, if you were sitting here with a young fellow now that was about to make the same transition. What advice would you give him that you would have liked to have known when you? Um, yeah, it's a good question, Phil. Um, you know, I always thought I was a pretty professional kid and was very prepared for the AFL lifestyle. Um, but you know, it's not until probably you get over there and get into the club and into the four walls that you, you know, really experience the demands of AFL footy. So I would just encourage, um, you know, if, if I was in that position again, just to go in with an open mind and a mindset um, to learn and take on board and really look to your senior leaders and role models at the footy club um, because then you can just soak up the experience learn as much as you can and you know see improvement um, a lot bigger so um, yeah it's been a great journey so far but still very good to go mate 23 yeah Yeah. it's interesting that 23 saying well you know it's Mm. You've got 10 years left, yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. Yeah. 15. Do you reckon there's another chance, though? I mean, you were talking before we came on here, you had a mm. bit of an in- inter- injury interrupted season with the Bay, but it's still a good season. Yeah. This year, if you have a really good season, can you see the opportunity still there? Yeah, I, I, like we said earlier, I still think my best footy is ahead of me, so I'm willing to give it a crack and you know enjoy being back at Glenelg with my mates and close to family and friends and just taking the pressure off a bit and having fun and still putting 100% into my footy and my training and, and being really dedicated to my craft and um, yeah who knows where that'll take me um, I'm realistic as well at where things are at and um, I'm, I'm just hopeful that I can have a good year and contribute to some team success so Steve uh, nearly 300 games I think just over 300 games and you do your night games your state games um, go back to 1982 West Times versus Sturt first yeah, game, first game must yeah. be very special it was, yeah, and, like, and that's what Billy said, you never forget your first game, yeah. I'm sure you don't, and I'm sure Phil wasn't no, his first game, but um, yeah, I hold it really close to my heart, and again, one of my first kicks was a goal, and uh, unfortunately, we well, keep the family well, tradition alive, because unfortunately, we lost against Sturt, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, as an 18 year old kid, it's, uh, it's the greatest thing that's, that ever happens to you, I mean, to be on the SANFL stage, and we came through at a great time, yeah. I mean, SANFL footy was terrific, the crowds were great, yeah. state footy took off, you know, we were involved in a really good time. You know, we had jobs as well. I will interrupt you. They talk about state footy, 1987, mm-hmm. uh, and they do play that game quite a bit. You played a fantastic game. And you're on the great... You know, you're very the, kind of me. Oh, no. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. So many of the people actually said to me when they do play, they played a, a lot in that particular game. Yep. Just a bit of down the bare wire. Um, that you were probably very close to winning uh, the, the best time grand. So you, you love your state footy. Well, I did. And uh, people often say, you know, when you play your best footy, when did you play your best footy? And those two or three state games we played from 87, 88, 89. Yeah. Um, you never ever forget them. You know, we played finals as well with yeah. Melbourne, which was great. But I do hold those state games really close to my heart. Yeah. And, uh, and apart from the, well, those three games, apart from the 89 game where we got beat by the MCG, fantastic. You know, yeah. you never forget them. You know, and the likes of, of uh, Lockett and Dunstall and, and Ablett. And then you've got Brereton and Watson on the bench. And, 
couch, you know, the Rivers playing, you know, a terrific lineup of players and just so humbled to be a part of it. Yeah, actually, most players when they, when they play their first game, and we'll come to you a bit on this one, Billy, it took 1982 as your first game, and yeah. you play Sturt, yeah. so remember that. If normally playing against or with the guys that you admired as a kid growing up. Absolutely, yeah. So, 82, there still would have been some legends playing for Sturt at that time, too. Yeah, I Biggest names at that time, you well, even, even, you know, you got Rick Davis, yeah, right. Jimmy, Jimmy Derrington. Derrington. Jimmy Derrington, I yeah. love Jimmy Derrington. Peter Motley, of course, with Lane, Lucky Spill, Flash Graham. I was at the game actually. <laughs> I was actually at the game. Watching the game. Right? The game. But also, you know, Bruce Lindsay and Shannon yeah. Bush and Jeff Saru and Lee Robson and Ian Hanna and uh, Rod Gold, you know, these sorts of blokes that I just idolised. And all of a sudden, I'm on one wing and the Rocky Wheels on the other. You know, so yeah, it's really uh, it's good. Me. So, yeah. yep. you know, it's um, just fantastic reminiscing about it. You know, yours the same. I mean, when you play first game for Melbourne, you know, you come out on the ground, you try not to be nervous. You know, you're in the rooms before and you go, I'm calm, I'm calm. But you know, you're really not. The adrenaline's going. You yeah. get out on the ground, you look around, big crowd, and suddenly you see some of the guys that you've idolised mm. play. So take a moment just to, to settle on that. Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was a Friday night game, from what I recall, and it was a long day, that's for sure. Um, it was against Sydney, round six, um, 2015. And yeah, I remember coming out on the ground. I think. I reckon I laid my first tackle on Dan Hannabury, someone who I grew up, um, you know, idolising, playing for the midfield, watching a lot of his footy, and then um, running past Buddy Franklin, that was pretty special. So, yeah, definitely, um, you know, yeah, got some very fond memories of that game. And, uh, Anyone give you any yeah. Any of the senior guys give you any bit? Um, any young boy stuff? No, nah, it, was, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was... was um, I was pretty lucky, I reckon. Started on the bench, so got got eased into it a little bit, and... Uh, once I keep my first goal, I think that... Um, it settled pretty so, well. Yeah, well that, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, preparation's fantastic for a, for a young player now. I mean, I know you're a chill cut, All-Australian. Um, you know, they, now obviously everything's really set up now to, you know, to, to, you know, to be part of the AFL club. Uh, it's uh, it's well done nowadays, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're really prepared. Absolutely, yeah. The talent pathways these days, and are very well structured and they, they pretty much mould you ready for, for an AFL lifestyle. Mm. So... Um, you know, you've got your, your AFL academies and your under 18, um, you know, SA State Carnival and that whole yeah. experience. It sort of shapes you and... Um, the AIS as well. Yeah, yeah. If they're lucky enough to be What about the Carnival? Yeah. Because the draft's huge now. I mean, we, yeah. the draft is huge. I mean, and the, and the Carnival, I mean, obviously, you know, the great Carnival in Australian. Um, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, if you don't play well in that, in that, uh, that Carnival, well, you know, it's yeah. a, you know, question mark over it, your name. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think we played six games in our, in our state carnival, so we played yeah. home and away. And, um, you know, the pressure is on. You know, there's always yeah, probably most recruiters in the grandstand watching. But I guess when you're that age, you just want to have fun with your mates and, and still try and keep the enjoyment factor there. That's mm. what you're there for, playing state footy with your mates. How good is that? Mm. Um, I'll still trying to, you know, impress the recruiters yeah. and put your best foot forward. So. And it's all televised as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's all on TV, so everyone's got access to it. So there's a, an element of, you know, so nervousness about it. Mm. For you, it was Melbourne, your, your club that you, you won. Because we didn't get a lot of no, no, no. AFL when, when no, you know, growing no. up. We used to win no, this for no. one hour. So there was no one that I was really passionate about, uh, you know, in the AFL, but you just knew that that seems to be the next part. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's a whole group of us. Um, so it was, a, it was a surprise. It was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I used to watch Collingwood and Carlton on yep. the winners. You know, so you were trying to support or no one really? I support. No, I used yeah. to like Carlton okay. and, and North Melbourne. And these were the top teams back in the you know, mid-70s, late 70s. So, you know, having Melbourne come knocking on your door, you know, what, what colour are they? Yeah. You know, what are they called? You know, and that's what it was like. Because you had a fantastic first year as well. I mean, you, you lost in a prelim, was it, in the, in the, in the final series? or? The second year, 1887. 87, yeah. It was a good year we lost in the prelim, yeah. 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 And then we played another four finals in the final, so. But I was lucky, I had two or three years in the SANFL system. So I, I think I was physically ready for it. You know, whereas Billy yeah. Francis has come straight out of high school. Yeah. A few weeks, good aim with that one. Yeah. 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 It's a really strong debate at the moment about pushing the age up. And when you talk to the recruiters, they have a different take on it than the coaches, which is quite interesting. But yeah, right. And we're talking before, and you can probably answer this, Billy, really, without being big headed and trying to set yourself up. But I reckon about 24, 25 is when you feel like you're ready yep. physically to play yep. in the AFL. Yep. Would you think that now? Yeah, yeah. I definitely feel it's, um, I think you're probably not at your 
know, your optimal playing weight or size or fitness until you're probably, you know, you're 20, anywhere between 22 and 25. So, um, you know, those five, six years of development are all about building your body, building your fitness, um, you know, and understanding the demands that AFL requires because the game is highly intense now. It requires a lot of speed, a lot of fitness, and it's quite combative. So, yeah, I think you're right with that. Well, it's interesting because your dad said, you know, you four or five years in the SAFL yeah. before you went. So you go, if you, if you put those numbers together, across, you were about 24, 25, yeah. 25 yeah. and you go, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah. But I reckon you're more mature too to deal with stuff when it comes to that age as well. Yeah. It's not a bad so, path either because, you know, you, you play, you know, Port versus you know, West Torrens at Febby or Warrow, and there's, you know, there's 10,000 people mm. there. Not at Febby. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> now. Oh, what not at Febby. Nice. Oh, it's <laughs> just trying to be nice. Well, sure. <laughs> but you get the big crowds, yeah, you know, you know you, you've got lots of pressure because you know, you, you know you're, uh, you're in the SNFL, you know, and, and even though you're I suppose, not really aware of what's happening over the border, you, you know that's the next step. Yeah. But you condition yourself. Yeah. 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 Nice physically a little bit. Um, Mature as a as a twenty two year old, um, so I was ready to go. Yeah. You know, and, and I was able to cope with the demands, but they're nowhere near as high as the demands now. And yeah. just looking at, at all these physical attributes now, yes, compared to five years ago, chalk and cheeks, massively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Father son rule, get drafted mm-hmm. into that. So there's a bit of comfort when you're sitting there waiting for the draft to come around, I suppose. But are you, are you nervous? Yeah, it was yeah. a little bit different when yeah. we got drafted. So they had they had the father son um, draft, if you, if you like, yep. over the internet. So you can actually have it on TV. And it was about six weeks, yeah, seven yeah, weeks yeah. before. Four four eight, 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 eight. Oh, so we so know what's happening. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And the night before, we had a couple of phone calls. Uh, mm-hmm. and we had a phone call from, from the pros on the morning. Yep. So we pretty much knew what was going to happen, mm-hmm. um, but in that in that time zone, you know, if you're at the draft, yeah. and you're waiting to be drafted, I can imagine what it would be like. If you, if you sort of pick the club for Billy to go to, who would you pick? No, no disrespect to Melbourne in any way, but you know, sometimes you see a spot, you've played enough footy, you know, yeah. my son would fit really good into Essendon right now because they yeah. need what he's got. Melbourne have got three or four of those, which would be okay. Was there a moment where you thought, we're well, happy where he's gone, but we well, wouldn't mind yeah. if he went there. We didn't look any further than just being drafted, because you'd be honest, and we thought that. because we had the affiliation with Melbourne, yep. that, that was our priority. Yep. If it wasn't going to be Melbourne, we'd love to have him home. So yes. some pros would pull out lane, probably in rows. So, yep. yeah, so we're, we're you know, stoked, actually, over the moment. And they've you know, been calling there for probably a few years, but okay. it's interesting it's about 14 or 15, so, yeah. yeah. It's just a different world, isn't it, Phil, when you, you look at it, uh, you know, I suppose, you know, back in the 80s when yep. you, you know, you, you can get form, form, form fours, form that's right, you can sign and, and uh, you can really, you know, work out where you want to go and where it sort of fits in and, you know, with the draft, it's, well, the pressure on, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know, those young, you know, those young, young kids to put everything on the table just for that one night and hopefully the, yeah. the cards yeah. are shuffled in, mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the right spot. A lot of pressure. Yes. Yes. Hey, coming back to play with the Nil last yep. year from the AFL, and I watched the, the transition uh, for the boys that come back with Norwood, doing a bit of work with them. I reckon the players are nearly as committed. They just don't have, mm-hmm. you know, they have to work, so that makes it harder. Yeah. And then I watch their commitment after. They're, they're still in the gym, they're still mm-hmm. doing the same skill stuff, they're doing it all, but they're fitting it around work as well. Yeah. How do you find coming back? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point, Phil. It's, um, I reckon their SANFL commitment is is quite high, especially like you said, yeah. the guys are working full time, you're coming to training um, usually three, four, five times a week, so the commitment is still right up there, you're not getting home too late. Um, so it's it is tough, but at the same time you love it. You get the you know, the end of the day of work and you just want to get to get to the footy club and have a kick with your mates and, and get back on the track and start working. So it's um yeah, it's a different lifestyle and it's and it was a little bit different um, to start with managing, we used to being training um, in the morning yeah. over in Melbourne in the yeah. adult system, whereas at Santa Fe, obviously training at night time. So there's there's a lot of little differences, but um, but not a bad thing at the moment because you're about one degrees at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're probably exactly. pretty comfortable yeah. training at well, five, five or six o'clock. Yeah, but yeah. the run in the Santa is you know is what's really surprised me over the last you know probably five six years. And I know that they you know they, they're very urging what's happening in the AFL. Yeah, but they get a lot of you know, opportunity to train and get that fitness where you know you're trying to play the same game, bring a game, mm-hmm. but only on probably three nights. So yeah, and recovery. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
definitely, you know, it's, it is tough and it is still demanding, but um, that's what I've been really impressed with Mark Stone at Glenelg, just the way he's been able to, you know, put together a game style which the players can um, cope with and perform every week um, while still working full time and yeah. having a lot of other commitments outside of footy. So, um, yeah, it's a great... nothing all that one-on-one, though, was it? No, no, one on one. Lies, didn't we? Fair the oval. You need to stretch. You know that. You fairly got me. I didn't, want, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to bring that up. Rocky had it down there. I know he beat me, Rocky, so it's fine. You touched on, on Stoney being a good coach. Who do you enjoy playing for? So, well, there's normally a couple of coaches we go, yeah. I play my best footy under him and he was just able to get out and for whatever the reason to it. Yeah, well, uh, Glenn Elliott gave me my start. Yep. So I've got a, a real close bond with Glenn. Yeah. Uh, and he was the one that actually gave me the advice to go to Melbourne. Um, and then I had John Lilly for seven years, so okay. uh, who was just fantastic. Yeah. Great communicator, got the best out of his players. Um, and uh, he was by far the best coach I had. I had great time period too. Yep. Um, didn't really get to know him that well. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're at a club for a year, it's really difficult. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, without a doubt, John Lilly. It was a good period. I mean, you played uh, it was 15, great 14, 15 finals, finals games. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great period that, uh, that he had. And in a period where they hadn't played in finals for 25, 26 years, mm-hmm. so it was a real elevation of the club. Yeah. Expectation, mate. It's always a tricky one to deal with. So you've got six best and fairest, mate, before you reach 14. 14. Years. What about that? It's not about record best and fairest. Not bad on the resume, 14. Mate. Then the expectation, of course, if you do that, is that we now expect you to be elite at this level. Mm. We just talked about it earlier. We understand that most people understand it takes time. Mm. But some people think if you're dominant there, then you're dominant there as well. Yeah. Rarely does that happen for athletes. Mm. Did, did you think there was a period where the expectation was way on it? Uh, yeah, I always grew up with a little bit of, you know, expectation. I think I put a lot of the expectation on myself, to be honest. Yeah, I was a really driven kid and um, always have been really driven to perform and, and get the best out of myself. So um, there was that self-expectation, that self-pressure. And um, with, with Dad playing AFL footy, there was a little bit of, you know, pressure there as well. But to be honest, I just tried to separate that from my footy and just tried to get the best out of myself and really just every training, try to improve and get better. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to get drafted and have, have a good five years at Melbourne. Um, and I still, to this day, I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I think, I think it's just something I've grown up with and um, being a dedicated and um, you know committed young person that's just followed through with me most of my life. So. You touched on it before, and sometimes when I talk with the AFL boys, you said you get a chance to come back with Glenelg and play with your mates, and it's mm. fun. Yeah. It's fun, and I'm enjoying playing footy. That, yeah. that kind of fun should be in the AFL because of that expectation. Mm. It's kind of drawn out a little bit. Yeah. Do you reckon it's missing a little bit? Some of the players I talked to go, yeah. they, like mm. to, mm. they yeah. don't want to be laughing at everything, but they no. want some fun. Yeah, potentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess with the pressure of AFL footy, with the crowds and the media, you, you know, you're always under the microscope. I think we yeah. chatted about that a little bit earlier, but... Um, it's just that added expectation, I think, at AFL level, whereas at SNFL or, um, you know, lower, league, lower leagues, um, that, that time, pressure, yeah, I think it just mm-hmm. take, takes a step back. Do you think it's because of the number of coaches as well? I mean, you look at Essen having, what, 19 in their box, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they want their, you know, two bobs worth as well. Mm-hmm. So you're sort of getting away with nothing, you know. So yeah. you just seem to be, you'd be under the microscope all the time. Yeah. So whether it's a fitness coach or your or your line coach mm. or the head coach, mm. that's a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The numbers are definitely a bit lower at the Santa Fe level, that's for sure. Mm. You got a few coaches in the box and a lot less staff, so it's yeah, yeah it's completely different. Did, did you find it too when you went from the SA and to the AFL? I mean, it was that era where you finished playing, had a few drinks with your mates after, so there was that. Yeah. It's kind of gone now because it's, you know, power aids and we've got to replace and we've got to stretch down. So there isn't that moment so to much. enjoy the win. Yeah. Oh. We were still able to get out and, and enjoy ourselves a little yeah. bit because we were only training three nights a week. We all had jobs. You know, you know your, your games were played the majority on a Saturday. So you do Sunday morning recovery where you go and have breakfast or a drink afterwards. So yeah. I didn't really notice it a little bit. You know, it was far more intense. Yes. But I think the Melbourne was a beast. So was it? Melbourne was a beast. Yeah. You go from yeah. Adelaide, that, you know, you're like you, you know, you're a, a fish in a, a, a small you know, fish bowl. Yeah. Yeah. You go to Melbourne, and like it was like wow, you're you're a small like fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can believe how how big free was in Melbourne. It was just, it was just I think the transition I hope was, you know, it wasn't as large as what the transition has been for. for Yes. So, you know, even though you had one year in the insane it was like a real shock to the system and this is how you have to do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it was a bigger transition, I reckon. Yeah. 
I think the media's got a lot to answer for that. The scrutiny that you're under just mm. constantly, you know. It's a multi million dollar business. Oh, absolutely. So there's, there's five times the number of journalists around AFL than there is around uh, the Labour or Liberal yeah. Party. Yeah, yeah it's okay. What's the matter? Yeah. 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 I don't know what it says at all. But, you know, I, I reckon the players, they need to have a chance, whether it was in your era mm. or this era that Billy's now in, where they have a chance to just relax and be normal. But mobile phones have pretty much taken that away. Yeah, yeah, if exactly. you want to go out, well, let's go out and have a drink after the game, boys. Well, mm. you know, mobile phones, you see with a beer in your hand, and suddenly it's a story in the paper mm. that you've you know, so Stephen Mayton was a classic last year. Yeah. He was into the pub afterwards and someone caught him having a, a drink. Yeah. And bang, it's on the front page the next yeah. day. Oh, Tex Walker yeah. was at a game that's right. Here or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's here while his mates were playing his NFL game. And he's yeah. Can't do really, can't do yeah. 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 It's just a fantastic game, though. When you, when you look at the, the negatives of, of uh, you know, that you know, that part of uh, being a player, mm. this wonderful yeah. positives though isn't it yeah, to be yeah. part of that uh, that AFL structure or the SNFL yeah. or hopefully you know something from the country sides you know mm-hmm. which you might, they might be questionable this year as well so yeah. you know it's uh, it's still a, a massive sport it is greatest game in the world right? yeah. greatest game in the world I think the country's agreeing with us though they're all pretty yeah, anxious we're just hanging out aren't we we're hanging we out are. we're hanging <laughs> out I oh, know Billy and Steve Stretch our special guests Anna we've got to get to a break appreciate you coming in thanks it's great to catch up thanks, with you thanks, thanks, thanks. Right, just about into overtime, mate, of the uh, before oh, no. the bounce. So it's nearly at the end of the bounce instead of before the what bounce. What a great interview. Fantastic, what a great mate. Interview. Uh, you've overachieved with well, Stretch I and I Billy Stretch. I reckon <laughs> Billy's still a good chance, though. I'd be, oh. be disappointed if, uh, and I'll get to you. Can I tell you, he had bookends. You know, he, had, uh, he was best on ground. He got injured. Yep. He came back and his, uh, I think he played the last two games for Melbourne. Yep. And the last one, I think he was in the top three best players. Yep. And then, unfortunately, he uh, waited numbers. He just, he just missed out, out, just missed out. So when you, so when you look at you know, um, what he's achieved, and you know what what he does on the footy field, um, it's it just ticks all the boxes. Yeah, His efficiency of, rates in the nineties, yeah, yeah, is in the nineties, which is just outstanding. I reckon some of the recruiters have got to start looking more at the 24, 25 year old guys, and some of them in, in Billy's situation, they've had a go and been let go, oh, no. but they've matured, and now they're actually better players than when they got taken. There's some there's some that are just left out there that we miss. So, you know, we saw Barlow, for example, yeah. picked up late and was dynamic. Yeah, I reckon that age bracket in there. 24-25. It can be a bit of a sporting tragedy, really. I mean, Russell yep. always says you, you don't peak until you're about 27. Yeah. You know, and, and Billy's got you know best players. He's you know, he's won awards. He's 23, and, and, and you know, now he, he needs a, he needs a break to get back into the. Uh, I reckon the we'll watch this space and see what happens. 24, 24. All of a sudden, you start getting a bit stronger. Yeah. You're still two years away from uh, your prime. So, uh, but Jesus, Dad was great. Yeah, a couple of us have passed out. My hardest game. My best player. <laughs> Your best, you said 87, you thought that was the yeah, best play you played I thought in, in the state game. I thought he was fantastic. It was, he was my hardest opponent in uh, 1984 it was. It was at Thebe Oval and it was tough, tough footy. But also because he was one of my closest friends. It's a really okay. hard one in those days. In those days it's just one on one footy. Yeah, okay. You know, so it was very hard and mentally tough. as well. Not in the zone. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah just, nah, well done, just Andrew. great. Two nah, great. You brought uh, in a couple of videos. Stephen, Stephen Stretch, Billy Stretch, our special guest. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Look forward to coming next week, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.